Yesterday, of course, the OBR warned that a three-month shutdown would slash growth by more than a third and push unemployment up by two million and raise borrowing by as much as 500%. These are the kind of figures we're talking about. As other nations across Europe begin to ease the lockdown regulations and begin to stimulate their economies, is it time we lifted the lid on ours? Even with the risk that more people could die once the lockdown is over, what is more important, the nation's health or wealth. Trevor Kavanagh is political columnist on The Sun, wrote a fantastic piece in today's edition called, uh, in t- titled Let's Go Back to Work Before Britain Goes Under Because of the Lockdown. Uh, Trevor, good afternoon. Good afternoon, Ian. We are kind of in that curious place, aren't we? I mean, if we don't get this thing back on track, as in the economy and the country, the price we might pay going forward is absolutely vast, Trevor. Yes, and I think it isn't an either-or situation. It isn't lives or money or lives in the economy. Uh, They balance out. The two things are happening side by side, not because of one another. And interestingly, yesterday, those figures you quoted, there were uh, something like 6,000 more than average uh, deaths in that particular week up to um, April the 3rd. Half of those were caused or at least linked to coronavirus. But interestingly... The other half were not. So Hmm. 3,000 people died in addition to the normal average for reasons other than coronavirus, but probably as a result of the lockdown. So who's losing here? Who's winning? Um, And the thing is that there are people who are desperately ill for other reasons, nothing to do with coronavirus. Maybe it's their heart, their kidneys. It might be uh, they're suffering from cancer. And they're not getting the treatment they would normally get in this period. So... The casualties aren't just coronavirus, and your reader or listener who talked about actuarial uh, death rates, if you applied the rule that every single death was an appalling tragedy that must not happen again, you wouldn't have cars traveling on the road uh, both going in both directions at the same time. We'd have to have dual carriageways everywhere. Yeah, that's a very good point, isn't it? And that is you know, the reality of where we're at. And we know that you know, when t- people talk about where we might be i mean if I, rishi sunak was very uh, quick to try and point out that this was only one scenario and it was the kind of the worst case scenario but even you know looking at it through the the, the telescope of the most positive position trevor it, it's still you know where we're at right now is going to take you know many many months to return and possibly longer than that so we the some of the damage is already done right yes and i think that these debts that the state is piling up for future generations will take more than weeks, months or years. I think it will take decades and generations if we get to the point where the economy is really uh, brutally um, killed off at the roots by the closure of businesses which are very viable but which perhaps are fairly new and haven't built up the sort of capital base they need to continue. Some of the very good businesses we've got in this country simply will not reopen after this uh, is all over and in the in the long run you have to think about the impact of that in terms of tax revenues for the treasury for spending on public services like the national health service like the welfare service like um, universal benefit education all the things that really are an important part of not just our um, uh, national state but of our well health and welfare I mean, you're, you're writing about this. Some other journalists are, are, are writing in a similar vein, Peter Hitchens, although I know Peter sometimes goes slightly off piste and into, you know, perhaps slightly more conspiratorial territory. However, I mean, the, 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 the point is the same here. Many people are, are questioning this. You know, you've got people whose livelihoods have simply come to a halt and they've just stopped. Can you ascertain you've been up close and personal with uh, governments over the years trevor as a as a journalist and as a, a political um heavyweight of on fleet street what do you th- imagine the thinking is going on in those cobra meetings right now they must be having these kind of conversations well i think the problem is that they feel that they're faced with the judgment of solomon that um something horrible has to happen whichever way they jump And I think this is timidity, largely because um, the ship is rudderless at the moment. Um, With the best will in the world, having just survived a near-death experience, Boris Johnson may well be looking at stuff coming past him, but he can't can't really do the sort of hard, heavy pounding that a prime minister would have to do to crack this one personally as leader. So he has people beneath him who are 
having to make up their minds as if he were there, but isn't. And uh, they, they're guided by the experts, guided by the science, but also affected by the public outcry that we must put the NHS first, second, third, and last. And in the end, that just simply doesn't work. Um, there's a lot of sentiment out there and a lot of sudden hypochondria, which is developed because people think, well, if Boris Johnson can nearly die of it, anyone can. So I think it's heightened the nervousness of the public. Trevor, on that point, always good to talk. Thank you, Trevor Kavanagh, political columnist at The Sun with us here on Talk Radio. Um, he's always got his finger on the pulse of these things. And there it is, the harsh reality of where we're at. Can we carry on? He made a really good point in there as well about the current situation with other care that's sort of being put on hold so if you've got you're having a if you're having your bunions removed tomorrow which may not sound much to the rest of us but i'm, sure, I'm never quite sure by the way what a bunion is but it sounds fairly archetypally uh, minor procedure territory i'm pretty sure for the individual that's quite serious you may have something even more serious tests you're waiting to have and at the moment that's probably on hold everything on hold in case of what might happen over this virus so it isn't just a case of getting the world back to normal because we want bankers to start making more cash down there in the city it's a much wider issue than that and as was mentioned a second ago i mentioned it out on uh, i mentioned it from a comment on social media i think it was taz that made it uh, that austerity will kill us too he says now <sighs> There's going to be people who can't cope with the fallout of this uh, because the nation does end up being royally skint for years to come. Unemployment goes up, things close down, and, you know, we are being told constantly, mostly by the left, that austerity kills. Well, even if it doesn't kill, it can, you know, ruin your life if you happen to be in that certain group that is most affected by the measures. So we kind of know that already. So you factor in that, factor in your mental well-being, the fact that half the nation will go crackers with nothing to do, factor in the fact that operations aren't being done, factor in the fact that we already have, as Trevor Cavanagh said, possibly decades of, of, of time to continue where we have to go on paying back the amount of money that is now being borrowed to address this issue. Is that worth it? Is the offset worth it what is more important the country's physical health or economic health